ServiceNow Knowledge Sport Team is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back, everybody. We're here wrapping up. Uh, this is day two and a half, really day, the third day that we've been here. Uh, and this is really our last segment. Jeff and I are going to break down sort of the week, what we learned this week, uh, and talk about some of the stuff that we've, uh, we've got upcoming. So, Jeff, as we talked about on Tuesday, we are seeing the ascendancy of this new company that's playing in the cloud space, the software as a service, the cloudification of, of IT. Um, everything's moving into the cloud. We always talk about cloud, big data, mobile, and social. Uh, ServiceNow is at the heart of that. We're talking about a company that's growing at you know, 50 to 60% a year. Uh, they are on track to do um, close to 700 million. I think they'll actually hit 700 million this year, uh, you know, give or take. They are going to be a billion dollar company very shortly. They will be you know, one of the next billion dollar companies probably around 2015. Uh, they're going hard after the global 2000. They're refining their total available market uh, vision. Uh, I, I, we've quantified it at Wikibon to be a $30 billion market, could even be bigger. You know, that was really a top-down analysis, so you know, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bet the farm on that necessarily. But I think it's you know, within an order of magnitude, for sure. Uh, and so I think that we are potentially seeing you know, a new wave of companies, the, the likes of Salesforce, which got it all started in 1999, uh, but companies like Workday, and certainly Amazon with infrastructure as a service, a $3 billion company growing at 60 to 70% a year. ServiceNow is unquestionably in that category of cloud players that are disruptive, um, that I hope, Jeff, can stay independent for a long, long time. I think that when you look at Workday, for example, they didn't want to get bought by Oracle. The day they got bought, bought by Oracle, Dave Duffield and Anil Bushri started Workday. Uh, right, was back Peoplesoft. Right, Peoplesoft, yeah. right. They didn't want to get bought by Oracle. And so I, I don't see that company you know, getting taken out anytime soon. They're not, and they've got so many you know, triggers that won't allow that to happen. They want to be a big independent company. I hope the same happens for ServiceNow. I'm very confident that, uh, that Amazon Web Services isn't going to spin it out and sell AWS. That's something right. that is a, a new player in the industry. And I love it because the IT industry has become this sort of oligopoly and you know in the mid 2000s it was kind of boring you know you had Microsoft and Intel and IBM and HP and you know SAP and Oracle and Cisco and you know EMC is sort of the small of the big EMC is sort of the, one of the more interesting ones what they've done with with VMware um, uh, but but so but you had the you know five or six big players right and you know little moves in the chessboard made a difference but now we're seeing bubbling up you know out out of the consumer markets, you know, things like Amazon emerge and, and, and Google and Facebook, and you're seeing a lot of those concepts brought into the enterprise and ServiceNow is an instantiation of that, you know, in a way that I think has, uh, has long-term legs. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping <laughs> that we're going to see many new powerhouses emerge out of this space and the big data space. I think right. Cloudera and Hortonworks and MapR and Palantir and all these other you know, opportunities that we're seeing with Splunk and Tableau. You know, s very hopeful that one or two or maybe three are going to emerge from that space as multi-billion dollar companies that are going to survive and be independent for a long, long time. So it's very exciting. It'll be interesting because the, uh, the incumbents, the powers that be, have been hoarding lots of cash for a very long time. And as we know, Microsoft and Oracle and a lot of those guys have a lot of cash. Um, you know, dry tinder, if you will, that probably haven't been investing that at a rate in new technologies that, that, that would justify the amount of cash they have. So we'll see, and obviously the changes at the top at Microsoft with more of a cloud focus and, and how that will play out. But a couple of, of themes that I thought were interesting today, you know, we, we keep talking about these newer age enterprise uh, SaaS companies in kind of a bucket uh, with Workday and ServiceNow. Um, and it was interesting that, that the guests were saying they actually work with Workday. They're doing an integration with Workday. They actually use Amazon. ServiceNow used Amazon to spin up the 24,000 instances for this show and actually are putting in a management service for enterprises to manage their AWS instances. So this kind of coopetition, uh, if you will, and the way to leverage these new service-based um, SaaS solutions for the enterprise to deliver SaaS services and, and, and service automation to the enterprise is pretty interesting. I think 
it really requires an outsider to come in and shake things up to drive the innovation that we're seeing. And as you said, things got kind of boring. It was always the same kind of stack, the same oligopoly. And I always go back to Clayton Christensen's book. It's hard to eat yourself. It usually has to come from the outside because you've got customers that are giving you money that you invest in continuous uh, improvement versus this disruptive improvement that we're seeing this kind of new age again. So it's a really well, exciting you know, time but to be so here. The, but the pattern we're in right now, I mean right now, the pattern we've been in for the last you know, five or seven years in the, in, the, in the enterprise IT space has been one where the big whales really aren't innovating. There's very few examples where the big whales are innovating. You know, you could, you could maybe argue that AWS is, but they're really not a whale yet. You know, right. but they're, they're on their way. Um, but the big giant companies, they really don't innovate. What they do is they, they buy companies. Right. Uh, and then they bring them into their, you know, IBM blue washes them, EMC's quite good at, at acquisitions, Oracle obviously quite good at acquisitions. They bring these companies in uh, and they put them into their sales channel and, and then they explode them. Uh, and that's how they try to keep on at least some kind of growth trajectory. But their growth is slow. It's single digit growth. You know, every now and then they might bump up against double digit growth. And so, um, but what has happened is, you know, everybody assumes that these new waves are going to crush the existing players. And they think that because during the PC era, that's what happened. And you saw, this, particularly the East Coast mini companies, Prime, Dang, Wang, Deck, DG, Apollo, they, you know, they all disappeared. Um, but a lot of the companies that, that, that created that disruption um, were paranoid, to use Andy Grove's uh, uh, line. So you have great companies that emerged from that. Uh, and you've got leaders like Joe Tucci and John Chambers and, and Larry Ellison, and now we'll see with Satya Nadella, seems to be shaking things up a little bit. Their legacy is going to be a function of whether or not they get crushed. And so, so that's, I'm a little nervous about that, yeah. right? Because I think that they've got so much cash uh, and they just, they wait and they wait and they wait and then they jump in and then they acquire and then they're able to manage their customer base in a way that it, it and in some ways, it, you know, it it's supports innovation because it creates new, new opportunities in white space, but it's less interesting because it doesn't create that competitive environment for customers, right. you know, it stays right. very steady state. So I'm, I'm feeling like cloud, mobile, social, and big data is going to disrupt that steady state, and I'm really hopeful of that. Well, the, the one thing that's, that we've talked about a lot of customers is, is what's driving the change is now the expected behavior of the applications by the consumers inside the enterprise that's driven by these outside forces. We're no longer, does the internal IT department dictate that here's your PC, here's what it's loaded on, here are the applications you're going to interact with, ready, set, go, when I think it was maybe Fred that said, when the CEO walks in with the iPhone, now suddenly, oh my gosh, we, we have to support the iPhone. So I think that trend will continue, and that will be a challenge for the, for the bigger incumbents to, uh, to address, but clearly they recognize that and they're moving. It's interesting when you talk about the big ones, I think IBM is an interesting example, as they jettison large chunks of their business, you know, they jettison the PC business, they jettison their uh, x86 server business, so I think it's a pretty bold move for a large organization to jettison a significant piece of business in the interest of kind of moving forward in a new age. And I think of all the big ones, they're really one who've shown not only are they willing to buy companies and integrate and try to integrate new technologies and do that pretty effectively, but then to discard that and really you know, play the, uh, play the card that this is not the place that we want to be anymore. And that's pretty bold. So what's interesting about this event to me, the knowledge event, is the emphasis on the IT organization, the CIO, the, the transformation piece, the CIO becoming a business leader, and we saw some really clear examples of that, the transformation of IT from you know, cost center into value producer, into, into service provider, into the, the, uh, the template for service provision. Um, so that's quite interesting. I mean, you find CIOs at Oracle Open World, you find them at SAP Sapphire, you don't always find them at smaller events, but you did here, you know, so that, that's impressive. The content that appeals to the CIOs was, I think, very relevant. Of course, you had a lot of IT service management, a lot of ITIL people here as well. Um, but you know, ServiceNow, they're going after the fat middle of IT, and IT is transforming, it's, it's, it's becoming cloud broker. Uh, we had a long conversation um, uh, uh, with Jason Wojan uh, about that from Cloud Sherpers. Uh, and you, as Frank said, you are seeing the cloudification of the IT industry. 
Uh, and ServiceNow is, as I say, right at the heart of that. Yeah, and it, we had you know a lot of Accenture KPMG. It reminds me of, of kind of back in the you know kind of supply chain optimization days. They took so much fat out of those processes you know, 20 years ago. And it sounds like, and it seems to be true, that there's that kind of fat now in the IT uh, services processes that are so manual, it's still forms-based. So if they can have the transformative effect on that process as happened in supply chain you know, back 20 years ago, huge opportunity. Yeah, and you know, this whole notion of value is one that's always been near and dear to my heart. I think that, you know, back post dot com bubble we cut into the bone. I think there's no question about that. And I think the yeah, Nick Carr's uh, Does IT Matter summed it up. And the pre prevailing sentiment back then was, you know what, no, it doesn't matter. And we asked Jeffrey Moore about that this week and he said, I think what Mitch, Nick, Nick Carr missed is that he was talking about systems of record and he missed that there's something beyond that which became the systems of, of engagement. I also think I said this, that he, that he missed that what customers do with IT practitioners became more important than what suppliers did. Uh, and you had companies like Google and Amazon and Facebook and Twitter emerge, they're essentially IT companies. You know, prior to that you had, you had the likes of financial services companies that were IT companies. Right, but right. that created an entire you know, multi-trillion dollar industry. And so, so that, you know, we always make, make fun of you know, does IT matter? Clearly IT matters, it's, it, you know, it's almost like you know, uh, the comment of, you know, back in whenever it was, the 1700s, of everything that can be invented has been invented. Right, well, right. you know, we know, we know better. Of course, you, you live in Silicon Valley, so, <laughs> so you know better. Well, the other thing, I mean, just, just look at something as simple as Uber, right? Getting people around on a taxi cab substitute, is, it's really a technology company. And, and there's lots of examples. I think people just kind of forget about them. I mean, remember Sabre with, with, you know, spinning out of American Airlines and really starting to, identify the value within their own IT infrastructure and the systems that they've built and then taken those to market as an independent company. So I think today with, with the, you know, kind of Gordon's more crazy rise in computing power, distributed computing power, these ph phenomenal networks and stuff that we take advantage of and GPUs and, and carrying around these mobile phones, that the opportunity for anyone to really to be an IT company a technology company that wraps a different asset class around it is huge, and I think most of the progressive companies recognize that and are going forth in that direction. So I think in, in for decades, CIO has been in search of the value equation. I've had literally hundreds, if not thousands of conversations with CIOs over the years. How do you measure value? How do you demonstrate the value of IT to the business? How do you quantify that value? And there really was never a great answer. Uh, there were methodologies to do that. Um, David Flora and I actually had a methodology to do that. It was quite useful. Um, but at the end of the day, um, they didn't have the systems to actually demonstrate that value. That's what ServiceNow brings. And, yeah. and I think it's going to open up a whole new opportunity for organizations to measure value, to demonstrate the value, to prioritize, to understand and model their business and understand how initiatives are going to impact the income statement and really begin to get a much better handle on that dynamic over time and, and add new disciplines that will drive corporate value. So, so the, the individuals that you talk to at this event um, and, and other customers that you talk to within the ServiceNow community are, are charging down a value path. There's no question about that. They're not struggling to find that amorphous value equation. Right. They're just delivering it. And that to me is an extremely powerful concept and is why, again, I think this, this thing has some serious legs. Well, the, the, the one thing that is easy to measure is the value delivered at the individual level inside these departments when people are no longer just moving paper along. They're not moving paper along as that gets taken away from them and they have an opportunity to rise up and deliver different types of value and help their business partners execute better. That should be pretty easy to see because the opportunity just to have a job moving things along and, 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 and doing very simple low value tasks, those are just going to go away. So I think that's a really easy thing and, and what's, what I find just refreshing and 
and uh, clearly the guests do as well, is most people really respond to the opportunity to deliver back to the company and to, and to, to be a more valued asset and to not just be pushing processes along. Well, and the simplest way to measure value is, you know, for companies that are profit-based is you increase revenue or you cut costs. I mean, that's, that's, it's really that simple. Now, there's other measures, right? You can increase valuations, you can, you can have, you know, customer satisfaction and other things like that. But, but at the end of the day, it comes, comes, always comes back to the income statement. Right. Now, right. in healthcare, value is measured differently. You know, the, with the value of a life, uh, the value of, you know, care. Um, but even, even there, they're turning people over, they're trying to get people out of the, the right. hospital. If they have to have repeat, you know, visits to the hospital, that's bad, right? That's an increase in cost. So, so you know, again, that comes down to the, to the buck in, in government. You know, it's all about the services that you can provide. So uh, my point is, it, it, the simplest equation is increase revenue, cut cost. And what's happening, as I see it with the ServiceNow initiatives, is they're plugging in to uh, two initiatives that increase revenue and cut cost. Right. And they're being able to measure that directly. They're taking people out of the equation. Frank Slootman addresses this. Yes, it scares some people, but guess what? It's a competitive imperative. That's happening, and it's, it's allowing higher quality, cycle times to increase, you know, uptime is, is better, you know, service is better, revenue is higher. I mean, right. you, they're, 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 they're seeing that. There's a direct connection now, and IT, as these guys say, are, they're, they're becoming heroes in these organizations. Well, so like, like Dave Schneider, too, said, said, do they have the instrumentation to measure it so they know if they're actually moving on one of those metrics? And, you know, yeah. he said that's always one of his early conversations. A lot of customers don't have the metrics to even do that within the IT world that ServiceNow is going after. So even for just providing the instrumentation, which again, goes along with people wearing Fitbits and all these other things, you can't make a change to something unless you can measure it and then see if there's a delta, whether that's saving more or making more. And, and to provide that level of, uh, of automation and instrumentation is the first step to, to then improving those things. So we saw some, um, some new innovations. We saw Eureka, new UI, the talk about the business edition, um, some other innovations, a lot of talk about IT operations management, enterprise service management, we see the ecosystem growing. Uh, in terms of the things that they showed, Mike Scarpelli told the financial analysts on Monday, they will all ship this year. Now some of them might ship December 31st, you know, at midnight, you know, when you talk to some of the folks, but nonetheless, uh, he's, he's put that stake in the ground. So uh, that's the cadence that they're on. Um, it's good stuff, Jeff, I'll give you last word. Well, looking forward to next year. I mean, it's, it, it's amazing how far we've come from just uh, knowledge 13. Uh, here we are at 14. As I look across the wall, I'm looking at the sign, what we'll see next year, knowledge 15 at Mandalay Bay in, in April. Um, it's an exciting uh, company. All the employees, like you said, that we, we met down on the floor, the salesman, I, I think I said, he's like a seven-year-old on Christmas morning. You know, they know they have something really special here. They see the bigger opportunity. Um, and so that's great, that's great momentum. So next, next week, we're at um, EMC World. Venetian and uh, Palazzo, EMC World. We have a huge cube presence there. We got multiple cubes going. We got multiple hosts. We got a huge team that's going to be there. We will be there in force. It's a great show for us, always has been. EMC's you know, a great ecosystem, so yep. really excited about that. And uh, So check out wikibon.org for all the research. Check out siliconangle.tv. Uh, for all these videos, they'll be, they'll be archived, they'll be Vinjid. Vinjid is our new data platform that allows us to, to chapterize all the videos, so check that out. Um, look for the upcoming events. Um, you know, we're excited. Uh, SiliconANGLE Wikibon is, uh, is cranking. Uh, we're doing a lot of events this year. We really appreciate all your support, all your tweets, you know, all your participation in crowd chats. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. That's it from ServiceNow Knowledge 14. We're out from Moscone. This is theCUBE. Thanks for watching.